Hello everybody and welcome to Alarislav's YouTube channel. With more and more features appearing in every system release, you have more opportunities to streamline your work process. We also know that in some cases additional information may be required to use them to the full extent. That is why we are introducing a new series of video here on YouTube for you to easily integrate all new technical improvements into your business. We have analyzed your requests and can conclude that SMS data coding scheme raises a lot of questions. Our system is being actively developed in this direction to meet all the specifications and technical requirements of different platforms. That is why we understand that sometimes it might be difficult to keep all the details in mind. What is character encoding? How many characters can be sent in one SMS? How to define which data coding scheme was used for a particular message? We will try to answer all these questions in this video and hopefully it will help you better understand the subject as well as freely use the functionality that already exists in the system. For your convenience we have decided to divide all these questions into two videos. In this part we will describe the theoretical side of this topic and in the second one the possible configuration in the Alaris SMS platform. You can see now all the questions which will be discussed in these two videos. And now let's start with the first part. First of all, we would like to specify that two of the most common protocols, SMPP and HTTP, are already supported by the system. So, what is character encoding and how does it work? We will try not to go deep into the technical details and try to describe the process of the data coding overall. In the general case, the data coding is a table where a specific number of characters is contained and to every such character a special code is assigned. That means that every time when we send a message we do not send the exact text or characters, but only the code which will be decoded in the future by the different equipment. In order to make that possible, both sides should know the pre-approved conditions in the way how to decode this message. On the whole, these pre-arranged agreements are the data coding scheme. There is a special table for every data coding by which the exact code for every character can be found. We will discuss all the possible data codings and their character sets later. But now we offer to consider the exact case for illustrative purpose and your convenience. For our example, we take the standard JSM 7 bit data coding, which was specifically developed for the JSM network. As it was already discussed, there is a special table for this data coding where we can find a match between any character and their code. Let's say we need to send a message with a text Alaris. For that, we need to find all the characters in this table and use their chords. Finally, we will get the following code set which represents the hexadecimal value of a number. In the end, for our example, we will convert this code in binary and send to the terminal equipment. After receiving this code, terminal equipment will try to decode this binary using the same table. And finally, we'll get our message. That is how the data coding process works in general. Now let's move on to the types of data codings. As mentioned earlier, depending on the protocol, different data codings can be used. They all vary based on two common criteria. There are the number of characters available in the character set, the number of bits used to encode one character. For example, in the mentioned JSON 7 bit data coding there are 127 characters and one character can be encoded using only 7 bits. So to send just a character A we need a sequence of 7 zeros and 1s like you see on the screen. There are also other data codings which can be used for a SMPP protocol. They contain different number of characters in the table and characters are encoded with different number of bits. For example, the data coding UCS2 contains much more symbols in the table, but 16 bits are needed to encode only one character. As a result, it will decrease the length of the text. 
So to send just a character A, we need a sequence of 16 zeros and ones, like on the screen. The link to the full list of the possible data codings and their description can be found under this video. Let's firstly check how the SMS can be sent using SMPP protocol, as it's the most common way. As you know, the short message is included in a submit packet, and as you can see, there are many fields in this packet, but we will check only a few of them which are connected to the data coding scheme. The first field which will be checked is data coding. In this field, you can notice the number of the data coding which needs to be used to decode the text. That is why the SMS switch before checking and decoding the text checks the field to understand which table with the character set needs to be used to decode the message. As you can notice on the screen, the value of this field can also be found in the EDR in the special column. The next field is message. We will describe technical characteristics deeply to show you in the future how many characters can be sent in one SMS. It is in this field the encoded text which will be sent further is kept. Technically, the SMPP protocol allows for 254 bytes in this field. However, usually this field is not fully populated by the text. The reason is that GSM specification should be also be taken into account. The specification restricts the use of this field to 140 bytes and the length of the SMS encoding in different data codings directly depends on this limitation. As we specified before, data codings differ in the number of bits needed to encode one character. That is why we need to count how many bits generally we can fit in the message field considering the GSM specification. As you may know, there are 8 bits in one byte and we can use 140 bytes in the message field. So we will get 1120 bits when we will multiply 140 by 8. Now we know the total number of bits needed to encode one character in the JSM 7 bit data coding. We will divide 1120 by 7 and get 160 characters. It means that in case the message is encoded in the data coding JSM 7 bit, it can contain 160 characters. Let's take another data coding QCS2, which was also discussed before. We will divide 1120 by 16, as 16 bits is needed to encode one character using this data coding, and we will get 70 characters. So that is the reason why only 70 characters could be sent in the data coding 8. Now you know how to count the number of characters which can fit in one message depending on the data coding. You can also see this calculation on the screen. But you can also change this limitation by requesting this from our technical support. There is also another field payload in the submit packet which can be also used for the text sending. Technically, it is possible to fill the data of up to 4 kilobytes, but usually it is not fully filled. So in case your clients need to send a text which is longer than 140 bytes in one message, then this field can be used. This is all important details regarding SPP protocol for this video. HTTP protocol is different way to send messages and it's much different from the SMPP. As you may know, the message is received as HTTP link. In this link, you can notice the data specified in the special fields. In this lesson, we will describe three fields connected with the text and data coding. These fields are message, long message mode, and data coding. We can start with the message. As you can see on the screen, the text is sent in this field and technically it has no restrictions on the length of the message. But as a standard behavior, the full text cannot be sent as the SMS switch should also take into account the GSM specification. That is why there are several modes which can process long messages differently. Please be aware that the text should be specially encoded using UTF-8 data coding and also URL encoded as you can see on the screen. But further, in this lesson, the text will be presented as a plain text for our convenience. Next field is data coding. Unlike the SMPP protocol, in case the SMS was received by HTTP link, 
the ECMS switch is able to determine the GSM 7 bit data coding automatically. In case all characters in the message text can be found in the JSN 7 bit table, or UCS2 if at least one of the characters from the text was not found in the table. But it is also possible to define the needed data coding in which the text needs to be transcoded. Your partner can specify the number of the data coding and switch will try to transcode the message. We will go deeper into transcoding in the next part of the lesson. And now we will instigate the long message mode parameter. The first mode is cut. It is the default one, so your partners do not need to specify it in the field long message mode. This mode will automatically shorten the message leaving only first 140 bytes to be sent. That is why the text which was received by this protocol and can be encoded as JSON 7-bit data coding will be automatically cut to 160 characters. But in case there is a character which cannot be encoded as JSON 7-bit, the message will be encoded as UCS2 and will be cut to 70 characters as it was discussed before. The next mode is payload. In case the text length is longer than JSON specification allows, all the text can be sent using the message payload optional field in the submit packet. So after receiving the message in the link with the payload mode chosen, the switch will use message payload field to send it to the vendor. The two remaining modes, split and splits are not just pass the message text, but can also divide the message into several parts. Such messages are concatenated. The splitting also depends on the encoding and the division into the parts can be seen on the screen. Well, that is all technical details which we plan to describe in this part of the lesson. In the second part we will describe the possible data coding configurations in the system, the way how you can transcode the messages and the most common questions regarding their data coding issues. In case you have any questions regarding the first part of the video, you can always contact our support team. If you have any suggestions regarding the channel development, we will be happy to get them also by the following email. So, see you in the next